This is the whole thing of like holding your mates accountable in a social setting, being impolite to someone who is doing something to negatively impact you or other people. Let's start with my first point, which is the Grace Tame situation. So for those of you who don't know, Grace Tame was the Australian of the year and she went to, uh, was it fucking Kirribilli? She went to see ScoMo, basically. Yeah. Do I care where? No. It was somewhere where ScoMo was, which is obviously a bad place to be. <laughs> but the point of this story is she was with ScoMo on uh, the 25th of January. And that is when um, she has a morning tea with the Prime Minister, if you're Australian of the Year. And first of all, can we talk about what she was wearing? I think it was using fashion as a political statement. I said this to someone, they were like, it's not about what she's wearing. I was like, but it is though, because she's wearing like a red, almost like iridescent blazer with stars on it it's like a almost denim like it's quite rigid black trousers and i think she's wearing like black boots like almost like combat boots the fact that she's up to, to parliament house as australian of the year as a woman not in like a floral dress for a morning tea i think is just so fucking cool but she was like i'm not gonna get some bullshit stylist to fucking put me in some poofy dress that i don't want to be in to meet scott morris and someone who i don't respect so she rocked up, sick outfit, but she didn't like, she didn't like get into the theme, I guess, of what I think it was supposed to be, which I really liked. And that was like an act of defiance in itself, her outfit alone. And a lot of people don't know that she said in a podcast with a Batuta advocate, she did say at one point that ScoMo, after she got Australian of the Year, went down to her and whispered after her speech, her incredible speech, are you happy now that you let it off your chest? This is literally what he told her. So how can you fucking smile when somebody tells you, Are you something serious? like that? serious? There's something personal here. It's not just that she wants to be rude. I mean, I would want to be rude. I don't think it's meant to be something to like measure politeness by, like if you smile or not. What about somebody who has autism, for example, where yes. they're not able to display emotion? Are you mm -hmm. going to discriminate against them? Mm -hmm. like, they're being impolite and I'm rude. getting a bit angry, actually, because when I saw no. that as well, I was like... That's a really good point. Fuck you, honestly. That's like, a really good point. Someone who is autistic or has a disability or... Can't display emotion, can't is neuroatypical. Yep, yep. Are you going to actually, like, hold them against that? I also think that if she hadn't, if she had smiled, they would have written articles about how she's hypocritical and how she doesn't actually stand by her beliefs and how, oh, when it suits her, when she can get attention, when she's Australian of the Year at the morning tea, then she likes Scott Morrison. It would have been... Um, Grace Tame. It would have been Grace Tame laughing with the Prime Minister despite her criticism of his of his past actions. That's what it would have been. It wouldn't it, like I just I just feel like she couldn't have won here because she can't fucking stand him. It's like if I met Joe Rogan. <laughs> or if I met, you know, Scomo equally. A woman acting with autonomy and just being true to her own emotions and her own experiences is not being a sook, is not having a tantrum, is not being all about herself. It's just her existing in the fucking world. And yes, while it was a political statement, her existence isn't a political statement in itself. Like, it was, but only because the media decided to write like 150,000 fucking articles about it. <laughs> <laughs>